That used to be the triangle, the parent-teacher-student right. triangle. And um, it's been my experience lately that parents are um, being pushed out of that triangle a little bit. And the, the biggest issue that came up for us that made us really stop and take notice with this is for us in fifth grade, when they did um, a human development and growth curriculum, which Are we talking about sex? I think, you know, I was wondering, yeah. and so I asked. And you mean you asked, is this sex ed? Well, yeah, you yeah. know, and they did, they were great. They had a, a parental meeting, so everybody could come that wanted to and sit and hear about it. But the issue was, is that they put an outline up on the whiteboard, and we noticed that almost every piece of the curriculum were videos. And so... Oh. Any parent would, at some point in time, say, can we see what the videos are like? And they said no. I know it's hard to think that your neighborhood school is actually part of government, but it is government. You elect people to run the schools. You pay taxes against your will. It's a government operation. But should parents know what's going on, particularly in curriculum? That's something that I've been interested in for a long time, especially as I've been hearing what goes on in my kids' classroom. Mm -hmm. Sherry Yaki, thank you for being with us. Nice to be here. Now, remind me which school district you're in. Pooter School District. And how many kids? Um, we have two kids in the school district. Okay. And how old? Um, they are 12 and 13, so 6th and 7th grade right now. Okay. now. Most people have to wait like nine months for their kids. Um, we like to speed it up a you little You like bit. to speed it up a little <laughs> how, how much faster were you able to speed up that process? Uh, well, we adopted our, our girls from another country and adopted actually three daughters. And um, one daughter is in um, a, a special home to deal with some of the issues that she had. And so it's been a long road, you know, And but it's uh, it's been really rewarding. It's been wonderful. It's tough. Fair to say... These, these, these kids have been through some stuff. They came from a, a traumatic background, like most of the kids that go through a, an international adoption, right. but really any adoption. How old were um, they when you got them? Um, they were four, five, six. All right, so oh just God. at the time where any sort of trauma can, can really be cemented into... We into were in the thick of it. <laughs> See, you're such, you're such a good person. I, I didn't even want to adopt my dog. You know, and I... I <laughs> I, I get to say, well, I rescued him. You know, it's, I didn't go into a burning building or anything, but and I hate my dog. I can't imagine <laughs> how much work adopting three kids all at once is from from um, a, a different country going through that kind of trauma and a language barrier yeah. to boot. Uh, easy job. What's the big yeah. deal? What's yeah. the big deal? All right, tie that in for me with the issue of transparency. Now, in Colorado, we have the open records law. Mm -hmm. And Cora. I want to see an email that um, some bureaucrat is writing to another bureaucrat. I just ask for it, and they get it to me. Mm -hmm. I want to see some of the documents on the budgeting program. I ask them, and they mm -hmm. send it to them. What are you looking for? Well, um, we started with a couple of pretty normal things. I mean, our kids were ESL, English as a Second Language, when we first started. And um, my background is in educational publishing. I used to work with ESL, so it was an easy thing to get what, involved with. What does that with. mean, I was involved with publishing? I'm, were you a mogul? Were you, were you signing? I wish. Doesn't that make things easier? Maybe I, I don't think people realize <laughs> that, um, tell me if I'm wrong, Educational publishing mm -hmm. is huge. It's huge. It's one of the few areas where anymore you have to buy a book. You know, here's here's the science book. Here's the math book. Right. It's not on Kindle. So th right. there's a lot. And I've been in educational publishing. They call it cradle to grave, you know, K through 12 into college. <laughs> and I've been in that industry for 30 years. So I was an. Just like selling stolen books on eBay. I was an ESL or? specialist oh, really? for a publishing company for a while. My original background was in social studies, and so I've done a little bit of everything as I've moved through. So, so adopting your kids kind of fell into place a little bit. You understand English as a second language and what yeah. those kids have to go through. We thought we thought that we could kind of handle that barrier. And we homeschooled, and we immersed, and we still try to keep Latvian alive, and our home doesn't work too well. <laughs> we only have about, I don't know, maybe 30 words that are still alive in our, in our household, because they just want to be normal American kids, yeah. you know. 
And but because of our unique situation, when they did finally move into a public school and, and they had a fabulous school to go into with lots of support from the entire staff. And so for me, as there are certain things that would come up, I would want to either, you know, um, partner with them so I could do some things at home partner to help the them. Yeah, to help them move forward. Um, I was very familiar with the curriculum. I think that the fifth grade was using a textbook that I had helped edit years and years ago. So, I mean, you know, I uh, probably was a little cocky thinking that if I wanted to ask for something that I also, would know you, how to get it. You said something I, I think is really important, that the staff there was really good. They were phenomenal. Right. And I, as a, my son has Down syndrome and, and going through the, the process, I have found overwhelmingly the staff in the school really wants to do right by my kid. They bent you know, over the, backwards the, for us. Some schools that he's been through are better than other schools, and you know there's different. But usually there's a connection that you you make with these <clears throat> educators if you have special needs kids. And I would yeah. imagine your kids are kind of similar. In a way, yeah. they're spe- they, these are not normal American kids. They've got yeah. something else. And so I, I really want to make sure I understand this. You like the you like the teachers. I loved you, them. You loved them. Principal, assistant principal. I mean, assistant principal had adopted kids. So he was right there right. in the mix with us. I mean, we we still talk to so all of them. So what's your beef, lady? What's I the know. problem? It's a, you know, the issue would come up with, um, with certain things that for any parent who has kids that come from some type of traumatic background... There are pieces of the puzzle sometimes that are triggering for them. And um, you have to get kids to a point where they know how to cope with the triggers that come up, whether they come up in fifth grade or at 25 or, you know. And we were put in a situation um, where we had to kind of watch out for stuff like that. And we went along doing what we needed to do, and things were fine. It's just overly sensitive parenting, helicopter parenting that you're doing here, that I want to see everything my kid is looking at, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to look at this, and you're going to show me what size eraser that they're using. Is that what Well, ironically, about? I really didn't have to be like that because I knew most of the materials that they were using. I had worked with many of them. And so I could go into a parent teacher meeting or something like that and, you know, ask what they were using and be like, oh, yeah, I know that book or I know that author or, you know, that set of curriculum to read through that grade is very familiar to me. So we're told all the time that our kids' success depends upon parental involvement and that when parents are involved, kids can excel in school. And it used to be the tri- that used to be the triangle, the parent-teacher-student right. triangle. And um, it's been my experience lately that parents are um, being pushed out of that triangle a little bit. And the, the biggest issue that came up for us that made us really stop and take notice with this is for us in fifth grade, when they did um, a human development and growth curriculum, which... Are we w- talking about sex? Ed? I think, you know, I was wondering, yeah. and so I asked... I mean, you asked, is this sex ed? Well, yeah, you yeah. know, and they did, they were great. They had a, a parental meeting so everybody could come that wanted to and sit and hear about it. But the issue was, is that they put an outline up on the whiteboard and we noticed that almost every piece of the curriculum were videos. And so ah. any parent would at some point in time say, can we see what the videos are like? And they said no. All right. The same people that you say have been really nice, great partners with you, care about your kids, say, well, can I see the material? Can I see the video? They said no. Why? They said no. Um, it's just, it's password protected or it's not something that we have access to. So we dug a little bit and some parents and myself talked to the principal and said, you know, we really need to see some, this, this shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. And found out that some of these videos are actually housed on YouTube. So it really wasn't that hard to review them. So we went in and we reviewed the materials and we're pretty wait, 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 shocked wait, wait, at what wait, we saw. Wait, 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 time out. So they said you couldn't see these videos, but a lot they of them- They didn't just give access to us. So all you needed was, oh yeah, it's, it's on this on YouTube link. link. Yeah. Yeah. So it was frustrating. But 
once we reviewed what we saw on the YouTube links, there were pieces of that puzzle that was concerning enough that made us want to see all of it. And that's when the problem began. What was concerning? I mean, it was, so um, they talked about romantic relationships. They did an entire day, not a lesson, an entire day on needle sharing. What, what? For fifth grade. What, what, what? <laughs> you know, it, the what, context what, what? of HIV and, you know, it was just, the more that we looked into it and there were some very explicit pictures on these in, in a cartoon fashion, but characters that were in very adult situations that for a fifth grader makes you kind of think, huh? You know, and so then there were links that we didn't, we were not given access to. So when we asked for those links, we never got them. And the reason is that so much of this stuff now is housed in a portal within a district that it has to be a teacher with their password going through a school district machine going into the portal. I mean, we yeah, had for me, for me, those are all just excuses, especially now that it is digital. It yes. is easier to see, even if you have to create a guest login right. so that parents can go and take a look at it. Right. Not, it is easier than if, well, we're going to have to give you the 16 millimeter film and right. a film projector. And I was... You remember uh, what the slideshows, the little reel, and you listen to a cassette and go beep, and you turn the yeah. slide, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's how I learned. Anyway, it's easier now. It's not harder because it's digital. It's easier now because it's digital. And we had a, a teacher that gave us every password she has ever been given from the school district, thinking one of them's got to work. I mean, you know, she was doing everything she could because she knew our kids' background. And now, let me, let me ask you: Were you trying to stop, or, or you wanted to see this because you're you're uptight prude and you don't want your kids seeing any any naughty videos, or did it have to do with your kids' situation in particular? It started with the fact that we have kids that have a traumatic background. And so we just want to be kind of prepared for anything that might trigger something. You want to be ready. But when, you can't, when you're being told that you can't see something, now you're a little, you know, when you are already looking at cartoons with characters in adult situations, but this stuff over there you can't see, it makes you kind of wonder what's in there. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so what did you do? Um, we had to simply opt out. Of the ones that we couldn't you, review. Did you try to put in a Freedom of Information Act request? We had 48 hours okay. before the class was being taught. So we could have easily, that's part of the problem. We were told a lot, you know, just file a Quora, which I'm glad that there is a way to, to go down that road. It needs to be there. Right. But when you have a kid going into a classroom in 48 hours, you don't have the time to do stuff like that. Which means, is it possible you could have seen this stuff and said, Oh, this isn't triggering at all. This could actually be helpful. We watched certain pieces of yeah. the curriculum and said, no problem, they're in that day. So that, no problem, they're in that day. That day, yeah, not so much. So you had to look like the evangelical fundamentalist who said, no, not my kid. I'm not going to learn about those things. Yeah. What you wanted to do was see it. I just wanted to see it. And with my background, thinking that a request like that is probably a no-brainer. Yeah. Because I know who to talk to or what buttons to push. If somebody like you with your years of experience on educational materials can't get to see this stuff and you have to, uh, um, you have to fight for it. it, it tells me something is systematically wrong. Well, I get lots of, of calls from parents that are like, well, sure, how do I do this? And, you know, because they can't figure out how to do it. Or, you know, when you have to spend, have to spend, you know, six phone calls and an in-person meeting and five hours on the computer trying to figure out what your kid is going to see. Who can do that? You know, we're just trying to, to get through the day. I mean, and remember, your kid can't get into an R-rated movie without you, but you can do Hey, right. I want to thank you so much. Uh, we're going to keep working on this stuff, so keep us informed. Yeah, absolutely. Sherry, thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. 
and subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.